What's up everybody, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and in today's video I'm going to talk about something I made, and this is called a dummy load, which is smarter than it sounds, so don't go judging me. Uh, the idea of this is to simulate various impedance loads on an amplifier, and I'll explain how it all connects so you can kind of understand how some of this back stuff works. But the main goal of making this product, which took a lot of work, it took a couple months, and huge thank you to Golden Sound, I'll have a link in uh, the description below, who's been very helpful along the way with answering some questions for me to make sure I don't go too far down you know, the wrong path. Um, but the idea of this is to validate manufacturer claims. What I will not be doing though is using measurements on headphone amps and DACs solely as the way to review something. It's just to provide honesty and transparency because honesty is the key to my heart and I hope my channel is a trustworthy source for you. So case in point, the example of something like this is let's say you have the new Fosse Audio K7, which yes, I am reviewing this. I've been asked about it a lot. Uh, I wanted to validate some things and work with the manufacturer on firmware, and this review will be coming out in the beginning of April when it leaves Kickstarter. I don't like reviewing things that aren't readily available. I, I don't trust the whole Kickstarter process for you know covering something and say, yeah, it's gonna be great, You know, just trust me type thing. So anyway, Fosse makes certain claims on output power. They say that this has 2,100 milliwatts at 32 ohms in balanced mode. Now, what about other loads? You know, if it's at a 300 ohm, let's say you have the Sennheiser HD 800S, well, that wattage varies. And some manufacturers will provide output power ratings ignoring distortion or having a much higher tolerance of distortion. So it's not really a valid apples to apples claim. So what I will be using this for is measuring the amps output power on every amp DAC that I can, you know, when applicable, at 16 ohms, 32 ohms, 150 ohms, and 300 ohms, both in single-ended, unbalanced, like a 3.5 connection, and in balanced when available, such as XLR 4.4 millimeter. I will be providing this data on all of the reviews of products I can measure, and eventually I am going to be open sourcing my spreadsheet. I'm a spreadsheet guy. I'll have some way of sharing all of the information for all the stuff I've tested, which will of course grow over time. So um, I can just say this right off the bat. Fosse claims 2.1 watts per channel, which is insane from this little guy. And I measured 2,086 milliwatts or just under 2.1 uh, watts. That is so close to the margin of error that um, it's dead on with what the manufacturer is claiming, which is great. Not all manufacturers hit this. In my early testing, it already didn't match. And I wanna show you how this works. So we're gonna do a little science lesson. This is a multimeter or a multimeter, depending on you know where you originate from. The idea of this, if I put it in impedance mode, I'm going to connect this to a couple leads. So this is the input side of the dummy load, which means if I am, let me just make sure I get a good seating here. So if I have a Fosse K7, now this has a 4.4 balanced option on it. So what I'm gonna do is use this cable, which is a four pin XLR to dual uh, XLR output. I'm going to uh, connect this adapter, which is gonna look a little cumbersome, but I did it this way because I wanted to actually uh, have the flexibility to connect wherever I want. Connect the 4.4 balanced right into the DAC. Now normally, this would go into here on both sides. Obviously, we're gonna do a little science experiment here and I'm gonna show you how this works. So this connection means that the Fosse Audio Amp is seeing 16 ohms of a load. The back of this dummy load has dual XLR outputs. Now those XLR outputs go to my RME um, 24 Pro SE. I purchased this RIP wallet because that was $2,500. But the reason why I got this is because the DAC is amazing. The ADC has such low distortion um, that I can accurately measure uh, amp performance without introducing my own distortion. Because the whole idea is I will turn up the volume of this amp, measure the voltage using an RTA analyzer in RU, and it, during that process, I monitor the distortion levels in the top left corner. Once I pass the 1% uh, distortion ratio, or THD, I then back the amp volume down just slightly, taking the highest possible wattage or output of this unit below 1% THD. And that is the power rating that I will be providing. Most manufacturers should be doing this. It's rare that they will go to 5% THD or uh, flat out ignore it altogether. 
but it's something worth noting. So all I need to do is plug these XLR cables from the back of the RME DAC. Uh, this is using the ADC input, so analog to digital converter, and I plug it in to the back of the dummy lobe. Now once this is connected to my PC and I play a test tone through this, all of this process happens. I can monitor everything using this as the interface to my computer. It's a pretty straightforward process. So I have 16 ohms, I'll turn it up. Now if I switch this little knob here, you're gonna see it go to 32 ohms. Look at that, it's pretty damn awesome. Then we got 150 ohm load, which 149.1, so this is, again, here we go, 149.6. That's pretty damn accurate as well. Now, based off the range of this multimeter, if I switch to 300 ohms, it's gonna be out of range. So I'm gonna to switch to the 2K setting and 299. It, it kind of fluctuates because this is a rounding thing, but it's gonna show 299 or 300, depending on um, you know the time of day, I guess, that I'm measuring it. So as far as how it works, there are multiple resistors inside. Now these are non-inductive resistors and I have them properly heat sunk because you can only handle so much wattage. When you have a resistive load, um, part of that resistance will generate heat and a cheaper resistor will overheat, change its resistive rating and then you get inaccurate results. So this box can handle anywhere from 12 to about 25 watts of power uh, through a headphone amp, which is overkill for basically everything else. Um, you don't need that much power I also want to note as a little side note here, don't think that this is going to shape reviews where I say, oh, this only has one watt at 32 ohms. That's still a ton of power. I'm just using this to validate manufacturer claims because I believe that having accurate data out there that's fair um, is really important. So you're not being misled as a consumer and also to provide kudos to manufacturers who are you know, actually releasing a product that performs within spec of what they're advertising. Now this is nothing proprietary. If you do enough research and you really want to build something like this on or on your own, you can. But I do want to show you just how relatively simple it is um, so you can understand what is going on inside. So I did all the soldering of this, but basically we have a series of circuits here. And on the 16 ohm load, which is using a uh, four pole dual throw uh, rotary switch. So I can do left and right channels on a single switch, which is nice. So the first circuit is just gonna flow through the 16 ohm load. And as soon as I switch to 32 ohm, it jumps to the next circuit. And now I have a 32 ohm return back on that XLR. And it's the same thing with both sides. As soon as I switch to the 150 ohm circuit, it flows through a single 150 ohm resistor. And then once I go to 300 ohm, it then uses the next circuit to add both together because when you put two resistors in series with each other, that is going to basically just add both resistors impedance rating together. So 150 plus 150 equals 300 ohms. I'm not gonna go into a whole science experiment about parallel versus series because the whole idea is we're using series to get the impedance we want. Um, some of these are not cheap. You know, if you were to build this yourself, I think the material cost is about two or $300. Once you factor in certain things like, you know, balance cables, this is a Mogami cable, which is, I think like, I don't know, 30 or 60 bucks by itself. But I wanted good quality wires because I didn't want this to introduce um, connection issues or have its own problems. So that is how the dummy load works. I hope that you found this video helpful, I guess, but it's to help explain a backstory on why I'm doing this. And in future reviews, if I talk about wattage, um, I'll probably point back to this. This is pretty accurate. I actually compared uh, my measurements to uh, measurements from Amir over at Audio Science Review and DAC measurements from Golden Sound, which they both use much more expensive um, amps and or ADCs. Amir uses like the Audio Precision, I think it's the 555X or something like that, which is, I don't know, 30 or 40 gram. Um, so I validated my wattage measurements against what he posted for the same equipment. And I'm within like a very small percentage, one or 2%, which can go within the margin of error for the unit's manufacturing tolerances anyway. So I feel pretty good about this data. I wouldn't have been doing all of this if I didn't feel like it would be publishable, which is why I wanted to build a real box like this to get consistent results. So hopefully you found this video helpful. <laughs> if you did, great. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd love to see it in some future videos where I'm gonna start using this to help support other content coming out. Thank you so much for the support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.